Right. Uh, I will give you a short introduction to why we are in here and what we are seeing. And then we will walk into another gallery to see the two artists, Liva Isaksson Lundin and Joachim Heidvall. They are right there. Put your hands up. And they have a duo exhibition in the other gallery. And there we will have a talk for uh, some some time before this creative morning ends. Uh, in here, <coughs> we are viewing 120 artworks that the Swedish Association for Art has purchased over about one year. You have 20 different works on the walls and as sculptures, and then you have this piece called Faith, Hope and Love, which consists of 100 artworks. And we buy all those pieces through the members' fees. So the association is actually like a members' club, free for anyone to join and pay your members' fee. And for that fee, we are able to directly support artists by buying a piece of work for this exhibition and also for the annual art lottery which takes place in November every year. So anyone who is a member can actually take the chance of winning a fine piece of artwork back home to their, to their place where they're living. And also in that way supporting the Swedish art scene uh, through, this direct, um, through this direct way. And apart from the 20 works that we have found all over Sweden during this one year, uh, we are four people in the committee or in the purchasing group consisting of three members of the board. Björn Springfelt, who was the former director of Moderna Museet. Bella Rune, who is an artist and also professor at Konstfack. And Iris Mille Westerman, who is now director for the Moderna Museet in Malmö. And myself as the director of the Swedish Association of Art. And then we have one piece, this piece, which consists of 100 artworks, which is commissioned every year. It's called the 100 prize work. So if you are a winner, you win one individual work, and then you actually share the big piece together with 99 other winners. So maybe in 10 years, you will have a summit or you get together and see how your work sort of look after 10 years again. That's a, that's a hope from us. Uh, so this, this work is made by Tilpo, which is a duo, Hans Eriksson and Hanna Ajonen, who's actually painted those works loosely tied by this theme, uh, faith, hope and love. And if you sort of have been around in art history, in politics, in society, in any kind of relationship, you will find many uh, views uh, over the past two, three hundred years pictured in this work. Um, what we also made this year is something new with the annual art book, because SOC, as I call it shortly, turns 185 years this year. So in the beginning, um, the members club was actually buying artworks from young students, young artist students, to make, enable them to go abroad on grand tours and educate themselves in the art history of Europe mainly. And then they would come back and um, know more and provide Sweden with a better artistic climate, sort of. But during that time in the 1830s, there was almost no way to see or view art as an ordinary citizen. Only if you knew the royal family, you had sort of possibilities to, to see exhibitions in the, in the castle. So this association started in order to um, provide more and more people to see and view art. And that is still what's going on. Uh, and therefore, turning 185 years, we wanted the annual art book, which everyone receives, albeit luck or not, in the lottery, 
uh, to present the 22 artists with more works than the, than the ones that we actually purchased for the lottery. So in the book, you're able to see sort of a broader view of every artist and also to have an introduction, but by different authors, uh, both art historians, designers, people in the field, but also giving new views of how to see and get closer to, to the chosen art. So that's where you're at. And then talking about Liva and Joachim, we have this work, Vibrisi by Liva Isaksson Lundin. Come, Liva and Joachim, to me, please. Uh, and this is actually how it, I can give you an idea how it works. Um, I went to see Liva's exhibition, graduation exhibition, at Konstnärshuset in Stockholm, uh, which was in 2014. Uh, when you graduated from the Royal Academy. And uh, this is actually one piece out of a group uh, of 11 pieces. And the Latin title, Vibrisi, is actually whiskers in English, morhor. Uh, and you made a very, very elegant and uh, seductive piece of uh, artworks in this way. And the big issue for us buying artworks for ordinary people's homes is how do, you, how do you give this to a winner? Where are they supposed to put it in their homes? But we sort of forgot about that because we had to have this piece. So we bought it and you sort of became part of uh, SOC in this way. And not long after I went to Berlin to meet Joachim Heidwall who then was living in Berlin. Uh, and I went to see your studio in the former headquarters, Stasi headquarter in Berlin, where you had your artist studio along with the lots of other um, artists. And we found blue skirt, which we bought for the lottery. And then we thought that it would be fun to do something new when Sock is turning 185. So the idea of presenting two artists in a dialogue with greater works, bigger works, that we are not able to purchase for the lottery uh, in the same way as we have here. Uh, we wanted to see your different kinds of um, works in a dialogue in a separate gallery. Now we are in the other gallery, Gallery West. We've left the east and come to the west. And Liva and Joachim, you are here participating in the exhibition that we've named Elaster. And why is that? Uh, I wanted you to sort of explain to us or tell us more about how you work. Because here it also again began with uh, visiting Joachim in Berlin. Yeah. Uh, I saw these works, some of these works that you actually, two, two of them, exhibited uh, in Berlin yeah. once in 2015. So can you tell us about this s sort of series called Corona? Yes, so hello everybody. Uh, so this is a series I've been working on, um, also the other one in, in the other room, uh, where I wanted to paint shiny materials. So I had this uh, satin, holographic material, and uh, leather, and uh, as in this, uh, it's a latex. So my main objective was to render the shininess in paint, you can say. And uh, uh, I didn't want to do like regular portraits because uh, I wanted the focus to be on the, on the fabric itself. And when you put the face there, you know, that's always becomes the focus. So I started cropping them more and more and going towards abstraction 
slowly during like three years. And you could say that these are the culmination of a three year process where I've been uh, ob omitting more and more. So in these I even omitted the background and let the shape fill the canvas even more. So it's uh, how far I can take it towards abstraction without going fully abstract somehow. But did you use photographs as yes, your yes, source? Yes, yes, yeah. I did. And about when in the process did you leave your photographs on the side after a while to become more and more abstract? Uh, yeah. Or were they with you all along? They were actually, these are, so these are from photographs and from uh, this uh, shiny skirt that I was um, uh, putting lights with different colors from the sides. So, so actually they look kind of like the photograph because the photograph itself is so abstract. Uh, so that was the same all the time. Um, but of course how I did it changed a lot because in the beginning I uh, basically did portraits where I've been cutting out the head and the hands uh, and slowly uh, cropping more and more and zooming in uh, towards this where I was basically just standing with a big spachtel and, spachtel, and a big brush and just like going crazy. So, yeah. Good, and then Liva, your work consists of the three sculptures here on the floor. Are you able to see them all? Uh, and tell us about them, because this is a dialogue between two artists uh, meeting in this room. You didn't know each other before, I think. No, we met yesterday. You met yesterday. <laughs> Uh, and we had this idea, we've been sending images and thoughts over the emails and trying to find um, a feeling for this exhibition. And tell us how you work, because you work very much with the room as well. Yes, yes I do. Um, but I think that the first idea for these sculptures was that I, I thought about like protective plastic <laughs> and uh, like this like small resistance that you feel when pulling it off from a new surface. And um, that was something that I was inspired by and thought that I wanted to use that resistance and try to um, let sculptures be like held up by it. Um, so I think that that is something that I have been working with in several pieces as a little bit with the feather also, like how are things held up is some sort of main interest, interest that I have. And um, here I've been working with glass, as you see, and also silicon. And uh, silicon is a new material for me. I've early been working a lot with latex, uh, as you talked about. <laughs> um, and uh, but silicon is like, um, a little bit similar to latex, but not quite as elastic, and it has this more transparent feeling to it, and uh, I was able to dye it, and so. Um, so I've been like trying to uh, use like the properties of each material and let them sort of act together in these like kind of like pair acrobatic situations, as I think about them. Like I wanted them to like pull these like silicon surface off each other and uh, like lean each other out of position in some way and try to create sculptures that was like uh, like uh, on their way to fall or like that there was some sort of movement that had stopped and um, and um, yeah and then I, I work a lot of with like the room and with these sculptures I have been thinking about how they how they relate to the room in the way that one is like leaning to the wall and this one is like lies with sort of its back or its belly towards the floor so i'm thinking a lot about like how like contact surfaces between the room and the sculptures but here i've also been working with um, podiums for the first time uh, and use the podium as some sort of continuation of the room with bushes 
interesting. You have to yeah. tell us about, you actually invented a super glue, we hope, uh, <laughs> for your silicone, yeah. holding your glass pieces. Mm. How did you find the right mm. glueiness so we're sure it will stick? Yeah, <laughs> um, it was actually quite a long period of like researching about how to glue it because like the silicon it's a very hard material to glue actually because it's so like greasy and fat and it has this like uh, I don't know what it's called but something that does that it doesn't really stuck to things <laughs> and um, so the one thing I could find uh, that wasn't like super poisonous also to work with and like really difficult was like uh, silicon like silicon uh, sealant um, but what I've done is that I figured out that like it was actually an accident that I figured out because I was I was trying to like glue it with the silicon sealant, uh, but it was like really uneven and wrinkled because the silicon is also the silicon sheet so it's also like elastic. Um, but then I actually spilled like a little bit of <laughs> of this uh, sealant uh, on the glass. Uh, no, I, I had some sealant on the glass and then I spilled a little bit of the other silicon, like the mold silicon uh, on that. And then it, I realized that it actually stuck. So then what I've done is that I prepared the sur surfaces with the glue first and then m made like a mold of the other silicon on top of it. So that, um, and I think that that was also like important to me to find that sort of way to glue because then I wanted it to be more like a surface that is like separated from a surface more than a surface that is glued to another surface. And um, yeah, and from that research period, I also find a title actually, Peel Shear Tensile, that is like different ways of like mechanically testing glue seal sealants. <laughs> um, so I think that they are like sort of testing each other's capabilities in some way. Hmm? And what about this? Now we've, uh, you've exhibited your works in a solo show before, and now you're suddenly in a dialogue with another artist. How is that for you? Um, well, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see <laughs> your works in a new uh, way? Well, I see them like it works. I think it works really good. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, yeah. It, it, it's a good. And for you, Liva? What is it like interfering with another? I think it works really good too. Like we only worked with this room yesterday. Yeah. And it, I felt like it was kind of, everything got its place pretty quick and looked nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, uh, I don't know, I, I started to work with this sculpt or like sketching with this sculpture a while ago. But then for this show, I was actually going to show other pieces from the beginning that you had been looking at. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I've been actually like, when I looked more at Joachim's work, I was got some energy and was kind of inspired to do something new and to keep on with these sketches that I thought was like in sort of the same rhythm as Joachim's work in some way. That I, um, so I, it was interesting to like work with another artist finished work in mind, mm -hmm. I think. Good. Yes, so these are completely new and you are the first crowd to see them <coughs> so far. Uh, so that's, that's very nice. And, and your work has not been exhibited before in Sweden. Right. Yeah. And both of you attended and graduated from the Royal um, uh, Academy of Arts in 2007 and in 2016. Uh, could you just shortly tell us your expectations from what you were gaining, hoping to gain from an art education, uh, and if that was fulfilled, perhaps? Uh, well, during my art education, I stopped painting and I started animating. Mm -hmm. So I did totally different stuff um, for four years. Yeah. Um, like m music videos and stuff. So uh, actually when I stopped school, I started painting again. And uh, since then I've been working a lot <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. in the studio. So. 
And for you, Liva? Mm, I think my expectations, I think it was a bit harder than I thought to, <laughs> to go to Mayan. Um, what was hard? A lot of like, um, it was of, of course, it was like so much luxury also, like you have the studios and the teachers and the help, but also a lot of like thoughts about not being good enough and so on. I mm. think I thought that only if I got in there, everything would be like fine. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that was really, it was really good that it was so much time. So I had time to have those doubts and yeah. still work. <laughs> so, but I, uh, I actually also worked a little bit with video when going there and like smaller installations. And uh, so it was like maybe uh, this work with the feather was actually my first larger sculpture mm. in the third year. So after that, I was sort of starting on what I'm doing now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think we are about to, to finish off this morning. But before that, um, I wanted to ask you, how did art enter your lives? Uh, through my parents. In what way? Well, they're all artist in some way. Yes. <laughs> so, so I you think were I, fed with it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when did you see yourself that you wanted to dedicate yourself to art? Um, I think I was uh, 15, 16, started going to Croquis yeah. with some friends. Yeah. And also then we did like uh, graffiti, of yeah. course. Uh -huh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and for you, yeah. Liva? Uh, actually also family or yeah. like my the occupations of my parents. <laughs> yeah. So I grew up with music and uh, theater and, and so on. And uh, then you decided some along, sometime along high school that you wanted to pursue. And yeah, exactly. I went to art uh, high school. Yeah. Uh, and then I had a really good teacher also that encouraged me and told me about this preparatory art schools. And so I applied to Järles Boys School and so. Yeah. Um, but I think art has always like sort of been in, in my life and that I knew that I was going to do it in some way, like, but maybe not as an occupation. <laughs> Good. Hmm? Uh, I think that's it. And before you leave, uh, we from SAC wanted to give you all a goodie bag. So if you want to go back to the other gallery, you will all receive a bag from us. Uh, with a former um, annual book with the artist Tova Mossad, which was, act uh, was part of our, um, our year in 2013. But it's also in English, so you have the translation there for en anyone in need. Thank you very much, Liva and Joakim, and thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs>